Agni Yoga Russian, Agni Yoga or the Living Ethics Russian, Ziva Atika or the Teaching of Life Russian, Yusini Zizni is a one of the neo-theosophical religious doctrine transmitted by the Helena Rarik and Nicholas Rarik from 1920. The term Agni Yoga means «mergence with divine fire» or «path to mergence with divine fire». This term was introduced by the Rariks. The followers of Agni Yoga believe that the teaching was given to the Rarik family and their associates by Master Morya, the guru of Rariks and Helena Blavatsky, one of the founders of the modern theosophical movement and the Theosophical Society. Agni Yoga is a path of practice in daily life. It is the yoga of fiery energy, of consciousness, of responsible, directed thought. It teaches that the evolution of the planetary consciousness is a pressing necessity and that, through individual striving, it is an attainable aspiration for mankind. According to Helena Rarik, Agni Yoga is the synthesis of all yogas. In all the ancient Hindu scriptures, the approaching fiery age was predicted. Agni fire, which to a varying degree is at the heart of all the yogas, will extremely sat the atmosphere of our planet, and all the branches of yoga will be merged into a fiery synthesis. Agni Yoga is a fire baptism. The most significant features of Agni Yoga are cosmism and universalism. They are expressed in the interpretation of any phenomena of human existence from the point of view of their cosmic significance and interrelation with the being of the universe. Agni Yoga played a significant role in bringing knowledge of Asian religions to Western world. Living ethics has an international following and has thousands of adherents. The ideas of teaching of life have exerted an influence on another esoteric movements and philosophies, among them the New Age and transhumanism. Topic: <inaudible> Birth of the new religion. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology and concept. The term Agni Yoga means mergence with divine fire or path to mergence with divine fire. This term was introduced to the Western public by the Nicholas Rarik and Helena Rarik. Agni Sanskrit, Agni is the Vedic and living ethics god of fire, one marks immortality and the symbol of life. Agni is one of the supreme gods in the Rigveda. In Agni Yoga it is the creative fire of the universe, the root of the fire of space and psychic energy. The powers of the human mind and heart, particularly those manifesting in love, thought, and creativity. The origin myth found in many Indo-European cultures Agni is a bird-like being, that brings fire from the gods to mankind. Alternatively, this messenger brings an elixir of immortality from heaven to earth. In the early Vedic literature, Agni primarily connotes the fire as a god, one reflecting the primordial powers to consume, transform and convey. Yoga, Sanskrit, yoga pronunciation is one of the six orthodox schools of Hindu philosophy. There is a broad variety of yoga schools, practices, and goals in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. Yoga is a group of spiritual, mental, and physical practices or disciplines which originated in ancient India. The term yoga has been applied to a variety of practices and methods. In Hinduism these include jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, karma yoga, laya yoga and hatha yoga. The term Raja Yoga originally referred to the ultimate goal of yoga, which is Samadhi Sanskrit, Samadhi Hindi pronunciation, S -ma -di, but was popularized by Swami Vivekananda as the common name for Ashtanga Yoga. In the Ashtanga Yoga tradition, Samadhi is the eighth and final limb identified in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Aum or Om Devanagari, Om Lisan, is a sacred sound and a spiritual symbol in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. This word has three phonemes, a, u, and m, though it is often described as trisyllabic despite this being either archaic or the result of translation. That signifies the essence of the ultimate reality, consciousness or Atman. The twelfth book of the scriptures of Agni Yoga is called Aum. Aum, as this book says, was a synthesis of sanan strivings. Prayer and inward concentration are excellent attainments which render healthful the state of the spirit. Each one in his own way has contributed a manifestation useful to spiritual concentration, whether he sought the solution in music, in song, or in the dance, man was striving to create a particularly exalted state of mind, promoting the reception of the higher energies, ur or aditi Sanskrit, aditi, limitless, in the Vedas and living ethics is the mother of the gods and all twelve zodiacal spirits from whose cosmic matrix the heavenly bodies were born. As celestial mother of every existing form and being, the synthesis of all things, she is associated with space and with mystic speech. 
She is mentioned nearly 80 times in the Rigveda. The verse, Daksha sprang from Aditi and Aditi from Daksha, is seen by Theosophists as a reference to the eternal cyclic rebirth of the same divine essence and divine wisdom. Ur is the root of the light of fire. It is stated in the Holy Writ of Agni Yoga, Shambhala Sanskrit, Sambhala Tibetan, Winking Face, is a birthplace of Kalki, the final incarnation of Vishnu, who will usher in a new age, Satya Yuga. Shambhala is ruled over by Maitreya. The Kalakakra Tantra prophecies that when all is lost, Kalki will emerge from Shambhala to vanquish dark forces and usher in a worldwide golden age. Shambhala is also called Shangri-La. Maurya is one of the masters of the ancient wisdom within modern theosophical beliefs. He is one of the Mahatmas who inspired the founding of the Theosophy and Agni Yoga. He has written and dictated the letters with the goal of elevating mankind and bringing in a new age. The master Maurya will physically incarnate in order to be the Manu progenitor of the new root race, Tara Urasvati the light of the morning star is the spiritual name of Helena Rarik in Agni Yoga and Rarikism. She was a teacher and healer as well as the inspired co-author of the Agni Yoga series, the first English books about living ethics and the Rorik's relationship with their guru. Each of the 935 paragraphs of the book, Supermundane, begins with the word, Urasvati, in the epilogue of the book. Agni Yoga. She was called the mother of Agni Yoga. Fuyama is the spiritual name of Nicholas Rarik (1874–1947) in Agni Yoga and Rarikism. He was an internationally acclaimed artist, conservationist, archaeologist, humanitarian, and peacemaker. Nicholas Rarik called Urasvati she who leads, in his creations, Karma (Sanskrit: karma translate). Karma (IPA: karm, listen) means action, work, or deed. It also refers to the spiritual principle of cause and effect where intent and actions of an individual influence his future. Good intent and good deeds contribute to good karma and future happiness, while bad intent and bad deeds contribute to bad karma and future suffering. With origins in ancient India's Vedic civilization, the philosophy of karma is closely associated with the idea of rebirth in many schools of Indian religions, particularly Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism. Karma works as one of the great principles of cosmic action. When man realizes the power of karma and strives to express the best aspirations, his path is parallel with the universal energy. The universal energy attracts the creative strivings. The future and the infinite are thus being built, written in the holy scripture of Agni Yoga. Spiritual evolution is the philosophical, theological, esoteric or spiritual idea that nature and human beings and human culture evolve, either extending from an established cosmological pattern ascent, or in accordance with certain pre-established potentials. The phrase, spiritual evolution can occur in the context of higher evolution, a term used to differentiate psychological, mental, or spiritual evolution from the lower evolution or biological evolution of physical form. The concept of spiritual evolution is also complemented by the idea of a creative impulse in human beings, known as epigenesis. Agni Yoga, in general, is a neo theosophical religious doctrine transmitted by the Helena and Nicholas Rarix from 1920. The followers of living ethics believe that the teaching was given to the Rorix family and their associates by Master Morya, the guru of Rarix and Helena Blavatsky, one of the founders of the modern theosophical movement and the Theosophical Society. Teaching of life is a path of practice in daily life. It is the yoga of fiery energy, of consciousness, of responsible, directed thought. It teaches that the evolution of the planetary consciousness is a pressing necessity and that, through individual striving, it is an attainable aspiration for mankind. The most significant features of Agni Yoga are cosmism and universalism. They are expressed in the interpretation of any phenomena of human existence from the point of view of their cosmic significance and interrelation with the being of the universe. Topic. Precursors of Agni Yoga Theosophy The Theosophical Society was officially formed in New York City on 17 November 1875 by Helena Blavatsky, Henry Steele Alcott, William Kwan Judge, and others. It was self-described as, "...an unsectarian body of seekers after truth, who endeavor to promote brotherhood and strive to serve humanity." 
After a few years Alcott and Blavatsky moved to India and established the international headquarters at Ajar, in Madras, Madame Blavatsky Upasika. this spiritual name means a female lay disciple. So the teachers called HPB, the greatest occultist in the history of Western civilization, insisted that theosophy is not a religion, although did refer to it as the modern transmission of the once universal religion that she claimed had existed deep into the human past. The motto of the Theosophical Movement, there is no religion higher than truth, theosophical organizations, regard it as a system that embraces what they see as the essential truth, underlying religion, philosophy, and science. Theosophical groups allow their members to hold other religious allegiances, resulting in theosophists who also identify as Christians, Buddhists, or Hindus. The term neo-theosophy was coined by Ferdinand T. Brooks around 1912. This term used by the followers of Helena Blavatsky to denominate the system of theosophical ideas expounded following the death of Blavatsky in 1891. This material differed in major respects from Blavatsky's original presentation, but it is accepted as genuinely theosophical by many theosophists around the world. Daryl S. Paulson associates, Neo-theosophy, with Alice Bailey. She introduced the term New Age, Age of Aquarius. Other neo theosophists include Rudolf Steiner's contemporary Peter Dunov and Samuel on Weor. Dion Fortune and Alistair Crowley were also influencers of the leading edge of the theosophical movement. Some examples of neo theosophists today include Benjamin Krem and Victor Scummon. So, in 1990, Scummon, based on the theosophical concept of spiritual evolution, proposed a classification of Homo spiritualis Latin, spiritual man, the sixth root race, consisting of eight sub-races subspecies, HS0 Anabiosis spiritualis, HS1 Scientella spiritualis, HS2 Aurora spiritualis, HS3 Ascensus spiritualis, HS4 Vocatus spiritualis, HS5 Illuminatio spiritualis, NS6 Creatio spiritualis, and HS7 Servetus Spiritalis. Topic: <inaudible> Russian philosophy and Russian cosmism. Russian philosophy as a separate entity started its development in the 19th century, defined initially by the opposition of westernizers, advocating Russia's following the western political and economical models and slavophiles, insisting on developing Russia as a unique civilization. The latter group included Nikolai Danilevsky and Konstantin Leontiev, the early founders of Eurasianism. Slavophilia was an intellectual movement originating from 19th century that wanted the Russian Empire to be developed upon values and institutions derived from its early history. There were also similar movements in Bulgaria, Croatia, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Serbia. Depending on the historical context, its opposite could be termed Slavophobia, a fear of Slavic culture. The discussion of Russia's place in the world has since become the most characteristic feature of Russian philosophy. Notable philosophers of the late 19th and early 20th centuries include Vladimir Soloviev, Vasily Rosanov, Lev Shestov, Leo Tolstoy, Sergei Bulgakov, Pavel Florensky, Pitarim Sorokin. In its further development, Russian philosophy was also marked by deep connection to literature and interest in creativity, society, religion, and Russian cosmism. Vladimir Soloviev described his encounters with the entity Sophia in his works, such as Three Encounters and Lectures on Godmanhood. His fusion was driven by the desire to reconcile or unite with Orthodox Christianity the various traditions by the Russian Slavophiles concept of Sobornost. His Russian religious philosophy had a very strong impact on the Russian symbolist art movements of his time. His teachings on Sophia, conceived as the merciful unifying feminine wisdom of God comparable to the Hebrew Shekinah or various goddess traditions, have been deemed a heresy by Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia and as unsound and unorthodox by the Patriarchate of Moscow. Nikolai Fyodorov was a Russian Orthodox Christian philosopher, who was part of the Russian Cosmism movement and a precursor of transhumanism. Fedorov argued that humanity is the culmination of evolution, as well as its creator and director. Humans must therefore direct evolution where their reason and morality dictate. Fedorov stated that the struggle against death can become the most natural cause uniting all people, regardless of their nationality, race, citizenship or wealth. He called this the common cause. 
Fedorov thought that death and afterdeath existence should become the subject of comprehensive scientific inquiry, that achieving immortality and revival is the greatest goal of science. At the beginning of the 20th century, there was a burst of scientific investigation into interplanetary travel, largely driven by the fiction writers such as Jules Verne and Herbert Wells, as well as philosophical movements like Russian cosmism. In 1903, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky published the first serious scientific work on space travel. His work was essentially unknown outside the Russian Empire, but inside the country it inspired further research, experimentation and the formation of the Society for Studies of Interplanetary Spaceflight. Tsiolkovsky wrote a book called, The Will of the Universe, Unknown Intelligent Forces, in which he propounded a philosophy of panpsychism. He believed humans would eventually colonize the Milky Way. His thought preceded the space age by several decades, and some of what he foresaw in his imagination has come into being since his death. Tsiolkovsky did not believe in traditional religious cosmology, but instead he believed in a cosmic being that governed humans. The ideas of the Russian philosophers and cosmists later were developed by those in the transhumanist movement and rarikism. For example, the Russian scientist Viktor Skumin argues that the culture of health will play an important role in the creation of a human spiritual society into the solar system. <laughs> <laughs> Historical development Information about Vedanta and Buddhism spread in Western countries in the first decade of the 20th century. In the United States of the 1920s, when the voices in religion were arguing over fundamentalism and modernism as the only available choice, and long before Shangri-La had become a popularly accepted myth, a vanguard movement was promoting the alternative of the wisdom of the Eastern world, Theosophy proposed the existence of a society of secret chiefs called the Great White Brotherhood. The members of this brotherhood, in belief systems akin to Theosophy and New Age, are said to be perfected beings of great power who spread spiritual teachings through selected humans. The members of the Brotherhood may be known as the Masters of the Ancient Wisdom or the Ascended Masters. They are referred to by Theosophists as Elder Brothers of the Human Race, Adepts, Mahatmas, or simply as the Masters. The first person to talk about them in the West was Helena Blavatsky, after she and other people claimed to have received messages from them. These included Nicholas Rarick and Helena Rarick, too. She emphasized that knowledge was the leading path of all great teachers. Knowledge will permit a free and vital approach to the great teaching, as vitally real as is great matter itself. When Nicholas Rarick passed away, his wife is believed to have carried on the work prescribed by Master Moria, I exist only due to the ray of the great master, who said it was necessary for me to remain because no one could replace me as I worked under the highest cosmic sign, and this century was in need of my attainment. The main aim of Helena Rarick was to spread the message of Agni Yoga. Topic. The Agni Yoga Society in the State of New York The Agni Yoga Society was founded in 1920 by Helena and Nicholas Rarick. It is a non-profit educational institution in CORE, paraded in 1946 under the laws of the State of New York, and is supported entirely by voluntary contributions and membership dues. The organization was located in the building Master Apartments. The aims of the society are embodied in the philosophy that gives it its name, Agni Yoga, as contained in the books of the Agni Yoga series published by the society. In them is found a synthesis of ancient Eastern beliefs and modern Western thought and a bridge between the spiritual and the scientific. Unlike previous yogas, Agni Yoga is a path of practice in daily life. It is the yoga of fiery energy, of consciousness, of responsible, directed thought. It teaches that the evolution of the planetary consciousness is a pressing necessity and that, through individual striving, it is an attainable aspiration for mankind. Though not systematized in an ordinary sense, it is a teaching that helps the student to discover moral and spiritual guide posts by which to learn to govern his or her life and thus contribute to the common good. For this reason Agni Yoga has been called a living ethic. Speaking about the role of personality in the spiritual evolution of mankind, Helena Rarick wrote, the greatest benefit that we can contribute consists in the broadening of consciousness, and the improvement and enrichment of our thinking, together with the purification of the heart, in order to strengthen our emanations, and by thus raising our vibrations, we restore the health of all that surrounds us. True, it is impossible to increase our store of psychic energy without the help of the teacher, however if our hearts are open and purified, and if our organism permits it, the teacher will not tarry in manifesting himself. 
Topic: <laughs> Latvian Raric Society in Riga. The Latvian Raric Society is one of the oldest society established by the Raric's family. In 1920 Vladimir Shibayev, while being in London, met Nicholas and Helena Rarics. In Riga they created a group of people to study Agni Yoga and another theosophical literature. In 1928, Shibayev went to India, to become the secretary of Rarik. In Riga the place of the leader of Latvian Rarik society was taken by Dr. Homeopath Felix Lukin. Dr. Felix Lukin and his son Dr. Harold Lukin conducted clinical trials are many natural medications that they received from Svetislav Rarik of the Himalayan Research Institute named Eurasvati. In 1936 Rihard Radzidis officially became the president of the Latvian society. During his lead, the books of living ethics, the works by the Rariks, Helena Blavatsky's and works by Radzidis himself were published. In 1937 the first conference of Baltic Rarik societies took place. The Latvian society was renewed at the Soviet Union in 1988. Dr. Harold Lukin carried the Rarik's banner of peace. The new president Gunta Rudzeit, the daughter of Rihard Radzidis, held contacts with many people of the republics in the USSR who were interested in the ideas of Agni Yoga. On 2005 the Rarik society received a social beneficial status in the Republic of Latvia. Master Institute of United Arts in New York City Nicholas Rarick is known as a thinker and a builder of life. His art and writings are an evocation to beauty, to knowledge, and to culture. His vision is nicely captured in his philosophical statement of the Master Institute of United Arts which he formed in New York City in 1921. Art will unify all humanity. Art is one, indivisible. Art has its many branches, yet all are one. Art is the manifestation of the coming synthesis. Art is for all. Mr. and Mrs. Horsch financed and directed the Master Institute that taught the fine and dramatic arts. For much of its existence, the Master Institute was housed in the Master Apartments, designed by Harvey Wiley Corbett in 1929 for Rarick and built on the site of the former Horsch Mansion at 310 Riverside Drive in New York City. Rarick planned to realize the educational concepts at the Institute. He invited as teachers such famous people as George Bellows, Claude Fayette Bragdon, Norman Bell Geddes, Stark Young, Deems Taylor, Robert Edmund Jones, and Lee Simonson. Intensive work was in process under direct supervision of Rarick. Nicholas gave lectures, organized new classes, for example classes of music and sculpture for the blind. Many representatives of American science and culture expressed their willingness to educate students according with the proposed curriculum. There were Felix Salmond, Ernest Bloch, and Michael Fokin. In the Institute of United Arts in New York City also taught Rockwell Kent, Claude Bragdon, George Bellows, and Norman Bell Geddes. Some contemporaries were skeptical spiritual mission of Nicholas Rarick. But those who embraced his philosophy experienced something transformative in his canvases. Rarick's name is universally known not only as master of the brush but also as a thinker and a builder of life. The works of the artist are an evocation to beauty, to knowledge, and to culture. Topic. Himalayan Research Institute named Urasvati in India Rarik's family moved to India in December 1923. They settled in Darjeeling, a town in the Indian state of West Bengal. It is located in the lower Himalayan ranges at an elevation of 6,700 feet 2,042.2 meters. From 1925 to 1928, Rarik's took part in a Central Asia expedition, that traveled through hard-to-reach and little investigated regions of India, China, Soviet Union, Mongolia and Tibet. Sikkim was the starting point of the expedition. During the expedition, research in topics such as history, archaeology, ethnography, history of philosophy, arts and religions, and geography was conducted. Rare manuscripts were found, and rich linguistic materials were collected. Special attention was paid to the problem of historical unity of cultures of various peoples. In 1925, Helena Rarick began to translate an extensive selection from the Mahatma letters to A.P. Sinnott. She also wrote a book named Chalice of the East, which was published under the pen name, Askander Kanam. Helena Rarick's manuscript, Foundations of Buddhism, was published in 1926, at Urga, where her expedition was staying at the time. In this book, the fundamental philosophical notions of Buddha's teaching were interpreted. 
The plethora of materials collected during the Central Asia expedition became the foundation for the establishment of the Himalayan Research Institute named Urasvati in Darjeeling in 1928. A few months later the institute moved to Nagar in Kulu Valley. The center engaged in scientific exchange with 285 institutes, universities, museums, and libraries around the world. George de Rerick was a world-renowned scientist, orientalist, and guru. His monumental translation of the Blue Annals Tibetan, and his 11-volume Tibetan Russian English Dictionary with Sanskrit parallels were published in 1934. One of his main focuses for the center was to bring people to the institute who practiced and lived the cultures being examined by the center. George Rarick was the director of the Himalayan Research Institute named Urasvati for 10 years. Svetoslav Rarick was in charge of the work of the Natural Sciences Department. He carried out unique researches in various fields of the natural sciences. At the basis of his scientific investigations was understanding of nature as one whole that is inalienably connected with the cosmic laws. The scope of his interests, cultural studies, comparative religious studies and philosophy, botany, mineralogy, Tibetan pharmacopoeia, chemistry and its alchemical sources, the work of the Himalayan Research Institute was based on wide international cooperation. Major scientists and cultural workers collaborated with the Institute Urasvati. Such as Soviet academician Nikolai Vavilov, biologist and biophysicist Jagadish Chandra Bose, Bengali polymath Rabindranath Tagore, the father of Indian journalism Ramananda Chatterjee, Indian philosopher and statesman Sarvpali Radhakrishnan, Swedish geographer and explorer Sven Hedin, and many others. The Journal of the Urasvati Himalayan Research Institute UJ, published articles on various aspects of science and culture. The publications presented a multi-level perception of the authors who were looking for a new integration of different cultural models in the mainstream of Agni Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Rarick Museum in New York City The Nicholas Rarick Museum in New York City was originally located in the Master Apartments at 103rd Street and Riverside Drive Manhattan, which were built especially for Rarick in 1929. Now the museum is located in a brownstone at 319 West 107th Street on Manhattan's Upper West Side. This museum is one of the most off the beaten path of Manhattan's museums, a collection of works by Nicholas Rarick, who lived on the Upper West Side for a time in the 1920s. The brownstone is chock full of amazing natural scenes from the Himalayas, where this artist spent two decades of his life. Rarick usually painted in stark tempera, with blazing orange skies or impossibly deep blue mountains. Currently, the museum includes between 100 and 200 of Rarick's works as well as a collection of archival materials and still attracts pilgrims from throughout the world. The mission of the Nicholas Rarick Museum is one, to make available to the public the full range of Rarick's accomplishments. They cover the realms of art, science, spirituality, peacemaking, and more. The museum seeks to realize the ideas of Agni Yoga on the role of culture in the evolution of the world and evolution of the human consciousness. Information about these Rarix ideas is always available. The museum also provides an opportunity for young musicians to perform in front of an audience on a voluntary and free basis. The Nicholas Rarick Museum in New York is the largest center of Rarick related activity outside of Russian Federation. Topic. International non-governmental organization The International Center of the Rarics The International Center of the Rarics Russian, Mezdunarodnij Center Rarikhov is a non-governmental public association of citizens and public associations incorporated on the basis of their common interests in the cause of study, preservation, and popularization of the Rarik family Heritage the center is an associated member of the Non-Governmental Organizations Association under the United Nations Department of Public Information. Conducting its activities, this international public organization proceeds from the applicable the law of the states in which its structural divisions are acting, the United Nations Charter, norms of the international law and international legal acts related to the center's sphere of activity, museum named after Nicholas Rarick Russian, Musea Meni N.K. Raria Mezdunarodnogo Centra Rarikhov Contents comprises the Rorik's cultural heritage passed on to the Soviet Rorik's Foundation now International Center of the Rarik's by Svetoslav Rarik in 19. It carries in itself a new cosmic world view for which new interest grows more each year. 
The core of the Rarikism is the philosophy of cosmic reality, the Agni Yoga, which develops the idea of a close relationship between man and cosmos, contains knowledge which assists in understanding the specific features peculiar to the new evolutionary stage of mankind's development. Topic. The World Organization of Culture of Health The World Organization of Culture of Health WOCH, International Social Movement to Health via Culture Russian, Mezdunarodno Obsestveno Divizeni K. Zidorovu Seras Kulturu was founded in the year 1994. Viktor Skumin was elected to the post of the president founder of this organization. The WOCH operates in accordance with the registered in Ministry of Justice of the Russian Federation Charter. In Agni Yoga, much attention is paid to health. So, in the book Supermundane, paragraph 525, recorded the words of Master Morya, addressed to Urasvati. Urasvati knows that people are responsible for three aspects of health: first, their own health; second, the health of the planet; and finally, the health of the supermundane world. People must safeguard their own health, not only for themselves but also for those around them. The human organism, though seemingly small, is a powerful repository of energy, and truly dominates its earthly environment. It is from these positions that WOCH approaches the solution of problems related to health. As Holy Scripture of Agni Yoga says, physicians can be true helpers of humanity in the ascent of the spirit. The intellect of a physician must be reinforced by his heart. The physician must be a psychologist, and he must not ignore the wondrous psychic energy. Professor Verhorobova and Professor Lobanova from Tomsk State Pedagogical University argued 2012 that in accordance with the concept of a culture of health, proposed by Skumin, the culture, spiritual, mental, and physical, determines the status of human health. And health, spiritual, mental, physical, is a prerequisite for achieving a higher level of culture. The World Organization of Culture of Health, in order to promote international relations, has established a link with the International Buddhist Meditation Center. The anthem of WOCH to health via culture consists of four stanzas. The capital letters each of the four stanzas form the word Agni, anthem, to health via culture, on YouTube. Another anthem by Skumin is termed Urasvati. Helena Rarik, known as the Tara Urasvati in Agni Yoga and Rarikism. This anthem begins with the phrase, The fire of the heart ignites Urasvati, she teaches the spirit take off on the wings of the grace. Six more hymns have the names, Heart, Shambhala, Morya, Ur, Agni, and Sun. In the Russian Orthodox Church the social activities of this international organization qualifies as an ideology of the Agni Yoga and New Age Na. The ideology of the Na serves outstanding contemporary philosophers, Gregory Battison, Ken Wilbur, Paul Feyerabend. On a grand scale is the creation and support of international organizations, contained in the ideology of the Na. In Russia and in Ukraine, international movement, to health via culture based on the teachings of Agni Yoga, operates and has a great publishing activity. The WOCH has its own publishing house, To Health Via Culture, who has the right to publish the books with the International Standard Book Number ISBN. The Journal of the World Organization of Culture of Health World Health Culture Organization is based in Novochabaksarsk. The journal received an International Standard Serial Number ISSN 0204-3440. The main topics of the magazine are the dissemination of ideas of culture of health, holistic medicine, rarikism, and Agni Yoga. The Holy Scripture of Agni Yoga The beginning of the religious and philosophical series of Agni Yoga was delivered on March 24, 1920. These Rarik's records eventually became the Holy Scripture, consisting of a series of books with a total volume of about 5,000 pages. Leaves of Morya's Garden Book won the call. Agniyoga.org, 1924. Archived from the original on 17 March 2017. Retrieved 24 October 2018. Transmitted from 1920 to 1923. First published in Paris in 1923. Leaves of Morya's Garden Book 2 Illumination. Agniyoga.org, 1925. Archived from the original on 24 October 2018. 
Retrieved 24 October 2018. Transmitted from May 1923 to June 1925. New Era Community. Agniyoga.org, 1926. Archived from the original on 17 October 2018. Retrieved 17 October 2018. Agni Yoga. Agniyoga.org, 1929. Archived from the original on 14 October 2018. Retrieved 14 October 2018. Infinity Part 1. Agniyoga.org, 1930. Archived from the original on 21 October 2018. Retrieved 21 October 2018. Infinity Part 2. Agniyoga.org, 1930. Archived from the original on 21 October 2018. Retrieved 21 October 2018. Hierarchy. Agniyoga.org, 1931. Archived from the original on 24 October 2018. Retrieved 24 October 2018. Heart. Agniyoga.org, 1932. Archived from the original on 25 October 2018. Retrieved 25 October 2018. Fiery World I. Agniyoga.org, 1933. Archived from the original on the 14th of October 2018. Retrieved the 14th of October 2018. Fiery World 2. Agniyoga.org, 1934. Archived from the original on the 25th of October 2018. Retrieved the 5th of October 2018. Fiery World 3. Agniyoga.org, 1935. Archived from the original on the 30th of October 2018. Retrieved 30 October 2018. AUM. Agniyoga.org, 1936. Archived from the original on 14 October 2018. Retrieved 14 October 2018. Brotherhood. Agniyoga.org, 1937. Archived from the original on 28 October 2018. Retrieved 28 October 2018. Supermundane. Agniyoga.org, 1938. Archived from the original on the 14th of October 2018. Retrieved the 14th of October 2018. Topic. Further reading. Rarick, Helena, 1929 to 1935. Letters of Helena Rarick I. Agniyoga.org. Archived from the original on the 17th of March 2017. Retrieved the 25th of October 2018. CS1 maint. Date format. Link. Rarick, Helena. 1935 to 1939. Letters of Helena Rarick II. Agniyoga.org. Archived from the original on the 17th of March 2017. Retrieved the 25th of October 2018. Rarick, Helena. Foundations of Buddhism. Agniyoga.org. Archived from the original on the 30th of October 2018. Retrieved the 30th of October 2018. Rarick, Helena. 1992. On Eastern Crossroads: Legends and Prophecies of Asia. Agni Yoga Society, New York. Retrieved the 23rd of September 2018. Rarick, Nicholas. 2017. Realm of Light. New York, Nicholas Rarick Museum. Archived from the original on the 30th of October 2018. Retrieved the 30th of October 2018. Rarick, Nicholas. 2017. Shambhala, New York, Nicholas Rarick Museum. Archived from the original on the 1st of November 2018. Retrieved the 1st of November 2018. Rarick, George. 2012. Po tropum sredinoj azi on the paths of the Middle Asia in Russian. Moscow, International Center of the Rarics. p. 780. Archived from the original on the 1st of November 2018. Retrieved the 1st of November 2018. Rarik, Svetislav. 2004. Creative Thought Articles by Svetislav Rarik. Moscow, International Center of the Rarics. p. 780. ISBN 5-86988-132-3. Archived from the original on the 1st of November 2018. Retrieved the 1st of November 2018. Scummin, V.A. 1997, Yusini Zizni Restimatia T1 The Teaching of Life, Reader in Russian, 1. 
Novochabaksarsk, Taros. ISBN 5-88167-009-4. Archived from the original on 1 November 2018. Retrieved 1 November 2018. Scumman, V. A. 1998, Yusini Zizny Restimatia T. 2 The Teaching of Life, Reader in Russian, 2. Novochabaksarsk, Taros. ISBN 5-88167-019-1. Archived from the original on 1 November 2018. Retrieved 1 November 2018. Scumman, V. A. 1995. Legendy Prichy Skazania Agni Jogi Legends, Parables, and Stories of Agni Yoga in Russian. Novochabaksarsk, Taros. ISBN 5-88167-008-6. Archived from the original on 7 January 2018. Retrieved 24 September 2018. Gallery Many works of Nicholas Rarick and Svetoslav Rarick, as an artist, are thematically related to Agni Yoga. Rarick's artistic works speak about the internal needs of the individual and about the ways of their realization. Rarick's paintings are a kind of teaching of life, on the spiritual development of mankind, about culture and its role in human life. This is a conversation about the eternity. See also The Ageless Wisdom Teachings Wiki quotes. Banner of Peace Rarikism Rarik Pact George de Rarik Helena Rarik Nicholas Rarik Svetoslav Rarik Victor Skumman References External links Agni Yoga Society. Agniyoga.org. Archived from the original on 17 March 2017. Retrieved 6 September 2018. Agni Yoga Society Sweden. Agniyoga.se. Archived from the original on 17 December 2017. Retrieved 4 September 2018. International Rarik Memorial Trust. IRMTKulu.com. Archived from the original on the 11th of October 2018. Retrieved the 11th of October 2018. Nicholas Rarick Museum, New York. Rarick.org. Archived from the original on the 15th of July 2016. Retrieved the 14th of October 2018. School for Living Ethics, Agni Yoga. Labendage-ethic-shul.de. Archived from the original on the 14th of October 2018. Retrieved the 14th of October 2018. Topic: Videos. Agni Yoga Web TV English Channel. YouTube.com. Retrieved the 4th of September 2018. Agni Yoga Manu Hierarchy Shambhala. YouTube.com. Retrieved the 4th of September 2018. Louis Kaiser. Nicholas and Helena Rarick. YouTube.com. Retrieved 4 September 2018. Rarick. The Call of Cosmic Evolution. YouTube.com. Retrieved of September 2018. Mandala Messages Tilde Agni Yoga. YouTube.com. Retrieved 5 November 2018.